We are a not-for-profit or collaborative group of 20 <coughs> service providers presenting information and contacts to US-based companies who wish to expand and internationalize their business into Europe using Ireland as a base. We are delighted to have the full support of the Irish <coughs> government and welcome here today <coughs> Philip Grant, Consul General of Ireland to the Western United States and Barry O'Leary, Chief Executive of IDA Ireland. Furthermore, we are delighted to have the ultimate endorsement from our Taoiseach, Enda Kenny, who has done a pre-recorded video specifically to the Ireland Gateway to Europe to assist us in our mission. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings from government buildings here in Dublin. <coughs> These are exciting times for the United States and Europe as we negotiate a transatlantic trade and investment partnership that will boost and indeed transform trade relations across the Atlantic. Europe remains a vital location for US companies. It is one of the largest economic entities in the world with highly competitive economies and a market of over 500 million consumers. And Western Europe is a vital gateway for US companies to access the huge markets of Eastern Europe, of Asia, and the Middle East. <coughs> and particularly for US companies, Ireland is an ideal gateway to Europe. Ireland is a world leader in attracting inward investment, both from leading US multinationals and from emerging companies seeking to internationalize their operations from <coughs> Europe. You see, we have over 1,000 US firms located here. Ireland and the United States enjoy deep social, cultural, political, and economic ties. And Ireland has a unique value proposition that appeals to US companies. We have a talented, dynamic, and young workforce, a strong, really strong technological base, an excellent record as a pro business environment country, a very attractive corporation tax rate of 12.5%. And we are the only English-speaking country in the Eurozone. So Ireland is now well on our way to economic recovery. Last year we added 61,000 jobs to the economy. In US terms, that would equate to more than 5 million extra people at work in one year. We have returned fully to the bond markets and are now borrowing at historically low interest rates. Our economy is on a solid footing and we have restored our international reputation. Our government and our agencies work very closely with companies here in Ireland and in the United States. So our message is clear. Ireland is an ideal location for trade, investment and internationalization. And we are very much open for business. Thank you indeed. Also, ladies and gentlemen, the Irish government body tasked to attract foreign direct investment into Ireland is the idea is IDA Ireland. I again would like to welcome here today its chief executive, Mr. Barry O'Leary, who will now address you. Thank you. Negotiating my way around there like the ski slalom. It's uh, great to see there's such a crowd uh, so early in the morning. So, by way of introduction, uh, Barry O'Leary is my name, and I head up IDA Ireland. It's the inward investment arm of the Irish government. And I'd like particularly to thank the Gateway to Europe organisers and team for inviting me to speak to you here this morning. Now, my colleague um, Senator Noreen will be talking to you later on, but just a little bit about. Uh, IDA and the way we look at uh, the business we're in of attracting foreign direct investment. We have a portfolio of about 1,050 companies. Uh, they employ directly 166,000, but in the economy the impact is about 285,000. They account for 80% of all exports out of the island of Ireland. So Ireland concentrates on a number of key sectors, but the top three give us about 85% of our business, and they're the technology sector, the life sciences incorporating medical devices, pharmaceuticals and biopharmaceuticals, 
and financial services. And the biggest market for foreign direct investment for Ireland is the United States. 73% of all FDI comes from the US. And within that, California, over the last five years, is clearly the market leader in terms of the source of foreign direct investment for Ireland. And I think uh, FDI has played a key role in bringing Ireland back to economic stability because the Taoiseach there mentioned uh, about you know, when the Troika, the World Bank, the IMF, uh, the EU, etc., on the funding that Ireland required about the back end of 2010, 2011. At that period in time, particularly at the back end of 2010, when Ireland went to the markets to raise cash, if we could have sourced cash, it would have cost 15% for 10-year money. Today it's 2.9%. We've exited the Troika arrangements, and I wanted to position that about what I think was a milestone in terms of foreign direct investment for Ireland and the impact it had on the economy. And that was that uh, you know the conversations that IDA's team around the world, we've 19 offices and here in California, we've um, a team in Mountain View and a team in Irvine. But uh, the conversations were about Ireland's future as an economic country, etc. And uh, really there was quite a lot of work had to be done to explain to companies that the things they came to Ireland for originally, in terms of you know the talent pool, the strong track record of FDI, uh, the corporate tax rate and the technology capability, all of those were not affected in any way by the uh, fiscal challenges that we have. If anything, Ireland became somewhat more competitive that led to winning more foreign direct investment. But I think three particular decisions in the first quarter of 2011. The first one was uh, Intel announced a $500 million investment in building infrastructure to accommodate at some stage in the future a major investment in a new node of technology. The second one was Amgen in the biopharmaceutical area. They acquired a facility in Ireland and uh, they committed an investment of about $250 million. And the third one was Google. Google acquired two of the buildings they were in for a sum of over $300 million. So if you look at it, that was the world's largest semiconductor company, the world's largest biopharma company, and the world's largest internet. The three of them uh, announced major investments and put their money into the ground. It wasn't uh, something that could move. It was a real vote of confidence in Ireland. And since then, we've had record flows of foreign direct investment, and thankfully that's continuing. Now, California, there are, uh, on the West Coast, there's 190 companies that have operations in Ireland. They employ over 36,000 people. And the way we in IDA, looking back at various milestones over the year, there's sort of three waves of investment. The first one would have been sort of the mid 80s to the uh, 90s, to the end of the 90s. So very much the big names, the Intels, the Apples, the HPs, Salesforce, etc. And to give you an idea of Intel, I mentioned our 500 million investment in building infrastructure. Last week we had a visit from Rennie James, the president of Intel, and she was giving an update on what was happening in terms of the new technology and they've already spent $5 billion on that particular investment, and that investment will not be completed until next year. So a huge, it's the biggest single investment in the history of industry in Ireland. Um, Tim Cook from Apple was over in Cork about four weeks ago, opening a new 120,000 square foot facility that they have there. They're now over 3,500 people and HP are building in Galway. The second wave from 2004 onwards was very much the internet era, the Google, eBay, PayPal, Yahoo, Amazon, those type of companies. And Amazon, or eBay and PayPal came with a team of 25 people. That was their ambition at the beginning. Today they've over 2,500 people. Google are over 3,500. So it's uh, people like LinkedIn and Facebook would both have more than uh, 500 people. And then about uh, two, three years ago, we set up a team around the world that were dedicated to identifying young, growing, fast-growing companies. And the idea behind that was a lot of them were starting up in the US, particularly the West Coast. 
because of developments with the cloud and various other infrastructural elements, they were able to go global almost from day one. So companies that you will know probably the name, uh, people like Airbnb, Dropbox, and Zendesk, uh, Zendesk, but names like New Relic, Adrol, Nitro, Qualtrics, Quantrics, you may not be familiar. Well, but part of our approach to it is some of those will become a bit like PayPal did at the time. So we're really, really excited about that particular program. And I have my colleague Deirdre Moore in here in the audience this morning who deals with those companies. Um, Senan will be talking to you a little bit more about why companies come to Ireland, so I won't duplicate that. Um, but what I will do is bring you up to date today, earlier on in Dublin, one of the new arrivals, Airbnb, uh, opened their European headquarters, the Taoiseach uh, did that whole thing. They announced in September last year that they were coming to Ireland, um, they've already got 100 people on board and today they announced they were going to hire another 100 people by the end of the year. And one of the nice brand names in the internet business, we have a number of brand names that we almost say we must have in Ireland. If you watch this space, there should be one another one from uh, the greater San Francisco area over the next week. So could I thank you all for your attention and hope you have a very, very successful day. Thank you very much, Barry, and thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come join us here this morning. I would like now like to hand you over to Frank Keane, a co-founder as well, to moderate for the day and take you through the format of the day. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Frank Keane, and I'm the head of international business at APO Partners, a firm of chartered accountants. And I'm going to be moderating the first panel here this morning. And I'd like to call on the panel members uh, to come up and join me here. We're going to run the panel, uh, the first panel this morning, about why internationalise and why Ireland. 